fair use. Three, oh, it's the magic number. Yeah, it is. It's the magic number. Somewhere in that ancient mystic trinity, you get three. Yeah. It's the magic number. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The past and the present and the future. Faith and hope and charity. The heart and the brain and the body. You get three. Yeah. It's the magic number. Welcome to Summer's Corner. Yeah, they had me. You guys remember this schoolhouse rock? Knowledge is power. Hmm. Not the way they thought. <laughs> Now dig the pattern once more. Three, six, nine. I hear them numbers. Twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Yeah. They was trying to wake us up. Three times one is three. You get it? Man and a woman had a little baby. There was three in the family. And it's a magic number. Besides the figure eight, that literally was my favorite schoolhouse rock. I was one of those kids who woke up on Saturday mornings. And I couldn't wait for the commercials to watch Schoolhouse Rock because that's what the commercials were. <laughs> it was the knowledge is power. And I did like to write and read as a youngster. I like to, um, you know, numbers is always my thing, you know. I like to color, you know, I don't know. He just took me back to my childhood. Who is he? The Father God. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And on this channel, as you know, we always talk about truth and love and joy and grace. And we walk by faith and in the spirit, not by sight. I do encourage repentance. I do encourage holy and righteous living, which is something that I do. I don't just talk about it. I had to live it with all the boo the brump, bumps and bruises and falling down and hurting myself over and again not being loved and being rejected and it was just misery until he came into my life who is he king jesus prince david the archangel michael <laughs> and so Today is Beauty for Ashes Part 10. I think I'm just going to make this a series because daily he loads me down with benefits. And I am just eating, 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 eating of the word. And I was going to do a song for you guys today that I always do at karaoke, which is Be Our Guest. 
<laughs> but y'all know how Disney is. You know, I can use the little YouTube music and post the video and give them credit. And it's fair use. But when you get to singing Disney songs, you know. But anyway, the gospel set me free. And I want you to be free. Everybody that listens, I want them to live in the same freedom and the same peace. And three is that magic number. What is it? Represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the scripture for today, and you know there's a lot of them, but this just starts off the day. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, Holy Spirit just flowing constantly, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That's a word that's on time, no matter what season you in. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And we are living in those days right now. I want that Psalm 1. One through six, which adds up to eight. And remember, eight is resurrection, regen regeneration, Jesus' name, no lack. And the thing about that is this scripture in 2018, it may have even been before that, it was a pastor who was being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And listening to the Holy Spirit as Pastor Charles Stanley. I don't know what's going on right now, but I know back then he was listening. And he said, if you want to have a relationship with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit, read Psalm 1 every day for 30 days. And I did it. And it literally helped me because this is it right here. Because we were born to be set apart. We were born literally as an offering to the Lord. If, if you are the Lord's, if you were chosen by the Father, you it's your pleasure to live holy. It's been mine. Whenever I don't, it's misery. It's punishment. It's judgment. It's shame. All these things that Jesus died for. And showed us the pattern and he fulfilled the law he lived under their law and lived perfect which is something we can only do with him because he does say be perfect as i am perfect he doesn't say how long the process takes for you to get to that point but at some point, you got to get on the road of wanting to live perfect as he lived perfect and live holy as he lived holy. At some point. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child. I did things as a child. I thought as a child. And I'm paraphrasing. I don't want anybody to try to hold me to the letter. I'm paraphrasing that scripture. But that's what it means. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And this is just the intro into the message. It's really just a beautiful message. But this is how I got to this point in my life to where I hear the voice of God. And I hear it very clearly. And I see him. And I know when he is near. And I know when he's speaking. It's because of these scriptures that i'm saying right now if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed james 1 
5 through 6. Be careful for nothing. Be careful. That means caring and you're, you're full of the cares of this world or you're full of, you know, you thinking about everything that's going on around you or all the things that's happening, but that's not what we were told to do. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And that really was one of the first scriptures that I learned in my teenage years, and I took it to heart. And then I learned as I grew, and so I got to the point in my life that I know when I pray, he hears me. I ask him that it be his will, whatever happens, and I wait for him. He always answers, but I know he's going to do something. And most times when I'm finished, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Every I thank him for everything all day. I thank him more than I ask him for stuff. Most times I'm sitting not really knowing what to ask him for because he gives me so much. But everything that I do ask, he does it. He, he'll answer me. Right? I'm really shocked sometimes. But people have a bad habit of looking before they listen. We look before we listen. But faith doesn't work like that. We're supposed to have our ears open because that's why Jesus said all the time, for those, you know, with ears to hear, he said that first. Let me drink some water. He said, for those with ears to hear and then with eyes to see. Because that's how faith works. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a hope. I was born on Hope Street. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> I didn't even know. You know what? I didn't know anything about myself. Literally. Not the things I should have known. I didn't know anything about myself really until the early part of last year when I went digging around my ancestry and my DNA. And I mean, I just boo-hoo cried, boo-hoo cried. Whew. Anyway, that's Hebrews 11.1. 1. For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace, Jesus, marvelous grace, immeasurable grace, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Thank you, Father. Just like life is a gift. And we say, um, the present is a gift. The present. <laughs> Live in the present. Because right now you're alive. It's a gift. It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, created in Christ Jesus unto what good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. He told me this, that's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And he told me in 2019, we we're going to go back to the beginning. It was all about Christ. It was all about restoring the garden. It was all about the promise that he made to Adam. I'm going to raise up you and your whole family. And nothing is going to be a curse to you. That's what he said. And he was going to die for that. So Adam didn't have to die anymore. I mean, that's really deep. I'm telling you guys, you should get that book. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? You know, the Lord gave me this last year. 
when he gave me Revelations 22, let the sinners do, because I over and over it says, and other people have taken credit for preaching the gospel all over the world. And at the end, when he sent the angels to harvest, which is where we are, it you're standing before God. It's nowhere you can go on this earth that you're not standing before God. And your nakedness has been revealed. Everybody's nakedness has been revealed. Because when the time came, it was his appointed time. We didn't have nothing to do with it. We had nothing to do with the planets aligning. We had nothing to do with total eclipses. We had nothing to do with blood moons. We had nothing to do with those signs that he said he was going to give so that we would know that he was near. That's what we were supposed to be watching for. While the devil was telling the his minions to tell you not to listen to people who are dreaming or have visions or who um, were paying attention to what we were supposed to be paying attention to. Now, I'm not talking about everybody, but he did say he was going to um, put people in a deep sleep. And he did say he was going to give. Um, it, this is just like Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 and also Genesis 40. He poured out. He poured out on all of them. But who did they go to? That's the key. When when the dream happened, who did they go to for the revelation of the dream? We were supposed to go to him. He is the giver of the dream. And I'm going to get to that. He wants us to ask him. But you have people going to psychics and witches and warlocks and spirit beings, you know, like these spiritual people and and rocks and chakras and everything. You know, it's not him. He talked to you directly and he talked to you in his word. And that's where I started. When I couldn't get an answer from man and I couldn't get an answer from the prophets and I couldn't get an answer from the pastors, I went in the word. I start praying for God to answer me. And he started talking to me directly. He sent birds. <laughs> He said dreams, birds, visions, other people who were also living holy and righteous. He was speaking through them in their dreams. But it says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And that's my point was when I came out of everything, when I came out of the church, came away from people who didn't believe what I believe, stopped wasting time talking to them because they didn't want to believe, they don't want to hear it. Why are we chasing after them? No. He says, speak to the wise. That's why Paul was talking about speak to the wise and give to those who want. You know, Jesus was not running after people. They were coming to him. And it's the same scenario now. He says, seek me and you will find me. So when I came out of all of that, that's when he started speaking to me. Because then I could hear his voice clearly. And then as you grow, then you he gives you the discernment so you can say, oh, no, something ain't right about that Wait. That's not what the scriptures say. Oh, well, why don't they keep reading? Because it says some stuff after that, then they would understand. You know, the, the Holy Spirit, you can hear is so clear. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God have said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That's what it says. And you shall be my sons and daughters. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. And those were the years. Come out, come out, come out, come out from the dead end jobs. Come out from these dead end relationships. Come out from amongst these people 
who just want to use you and don't have your best interests at heart. They're just trying to take advantage of the gifts God gave you. No, use it for me and love on those who want the love. Speak to those who are hungry to hear it. I never thought I would experience people who claim to believe in God blowing their breath and want me to hurry up and shut up. Then you don't want to hear what I have to say. Just say that and I I won't be casting my pearls. This is why I had to come out from everything from amongst those who don't agree with the gospel, who do not believe that Jesus is the son of God and the Christ and the Messiah, who don't believe the word of God as written in the Torah and the Bible and all of the other writings that agree with these things. Because John 21 says the world cannot contain the writing, the world. And then I was listening to a lady, bless her heart. They doing the work. The Holy Spirits are doing the work. Where I knew the Lord showed me last year about the Alexandria Library and how, um, you know, they had burned it down. and But I didn't know that it had 400,000 books in it. 400,000. And also that it came out of Egypt, that it had an association with Egypt because Egypt had the plant in the land that made the papyrus. You know, that's the writing paper. The plant only grew in Egypt. I said, Lord, have mercy. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James 1, 12. See, it wasn't in his plan for me to die. But had I kept going with all of those things and being in the wrong places at the wrong time and with the wrong people, I would have probably not been here to talk to you right now. And what a tragedy that would be. And I say that not to be, you know, I just think, thank God I cried every day. Thank God. Thank God. I was looking at this video today and I was just crying. I was just weeping like all over again. I don't know any of these people, you know, and you know, I can't say that they didn't know the Lord or they weren't his, but they just, they believed the lie and they lost their life. And it's a lot of them that they're not even telling you guys. They're, they're blocking these, these people from telling their stories. It's, it's tragic and sad. I mean, I just wept and wept and wept. I said, Lord, please, please speak to me. Give me a word. And he gave me one. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I'm going to change this because um, I don't like this one right here. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute to put on something that I actually like. <laughs> um, oh, I like these little study beats. So, um, he gave us a pattern and he gave it to us over and over and over. And we have plenty of people to be our example. And we saw what happened when they did it right. And we saw what happened when they did it wrong. And actually we're living in a position or we were put in a position because of those before us. And it says, in holiness and righteousness before him all days of our life, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, 
for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. I keep pre preaching about repentance. Just, you know, it's all I can talk about because like, you know, with Paul, like I was like the worst of the worst. And <laughs> it was just selfishness, you know. Like, I was a lover, giver, do anything for anybody, hard work, all those things, you know. But nobody is perfect. We all have something. And my thing was the sin that leads to death, fornication. Thinking that it was love. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about it. That's the word he gave me today. It really went deep, deeper than I thought. He, you know, I mean, if I could just share with you guys how much peace I have, how happy I am, how it, I haven't had a lonely moment since he came into my life completely. I find joy. I, I am content. It is truly that scripture that says I've been this and I've been that and I've been this and I've been that. But I am content. Just to know him. But it says to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Because we are in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Luke 1, 70 through 79. So an unequally yoked team has one stronger ox and one weaker, or one taller and one shorter. When an oxen are unequally yoked, they cannot perform the task set before them. Instead of working together, they are at odds with one another. And, and really, we don't understand that. That's, that's really basically is what it is. How can two walk together and they can't agree? And this is where my misery came from, this being in agreement with people who weren't in agreement with me, living with them, going into partnership with them, making covenants with them. All the while, they're not living for God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And then it was misery for me because I'm talking about the one that I love that's changed my life, that saved my life, that's healed me and people around me, and they don't want to hear it, but yet I love them. I was just making myself miserable. No, that's why he said, come out, be set apart, be with those with like precious faith. You know, and, and you got to test the spirits just because somebody say, oh, I believe in God. Oh, and they work at the church. They go every day. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Because I found those same people to be the ones committing adultery, fornicating, lusting, um, lying, habitual liars. But even in all of that, there is still forgiveness. There is still a savior who died for you, who will forget it all. And you will be like the prodigal son or daughter. Prepare the fatted calf. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I'm not lacking in anything, in any answers, in any word. I have a clear understanding. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Luke 180. So that led me into where he took me today, which is the gospel according to Philip. See, there's a lot of writings that we were not given access to that they tried to destroy, that were scattered in pieces. But all of the apostles did as the Lord instructed them to do. They preached the gospel. They taught the gospel. They lived the gospel. They wrote the gospel. They spread the gospel. This is the gospel according to Philip found in the Coptic Gospels or the Gnostic Gospels. 
and you're going to see why they didn't include it. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went and beheld a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened not his mouth. So opened he not his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. It's not just you heard a word and yeah, I'm just going to go through with this. No, you have to count the cost. It says, if you believe with all your heart, you mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. Now, Azotus is ancient Israel. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea, Acts 8, 26 through 40. And remember, some posts to go, I told you Shabbat.org said that Canaan was Israel. Azotus is an ancient Israel. And remember, it said in the beginning of the scripture that he was in the south, which is the land of Ham, or Mizraim, or Egypt, or the world. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Jesus said that. Listen to when he said it in Matthew 19, verse 12, 19. I told you that was 2019. That was the end of the church age. When we went into 2020, we was going into the year of the Lord. I proclaimed it. He was going to start establishing his kingdom on the earth. That's a kingdom of righteousness, of holiness. He said he wasn't going to do it all at one time. If you read second address, little by little. That's what the angels do. They said they're going to come. They're going to take the wheat and put it in the barn for safekeeping. And then verse 12, faith. That's what we're talking about, faith. Also Israel, also the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, listen to this. A Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, is mentioned in the Bible when the apostle Philip meets a eunuch of great authority under her reign. 
Yes, I said under her reign and converts him to Christianity. Acts 8, verse 27 through 39, which I just read. In this passage, as in other ancient works mentioning the Candace, the royal title has often been confused with a personal name. The Candaces of Moreau were the queens of the kingdom of Cush. Cush is in the Bible, who ruled from the city of Moreau in 284 BCE to 314. I'm going to name them all. It says it's a number of whom ruled independently in what is now Sudan. The title Candace is the Latinized version. You hear that? Latinized version. Candida is another. The title Candace is the Latinized version of the term Kentake, or it's still it's Kent, Kenta, Kentake. I'm not sure how you say it. Or Kandake is K E N T A, or like Ken Take or Candake <laughs> in Meritic and may mean queen regent or queen mother, but also means royal woman. Although the term seems to have originally referred to the mother of the king from around 170 BCE, it was also used to designate a female monarch who reigned independently. And I'm going to tell you later why the Lord brought this to my attention. The queens making up the Candaces of Moreau were the following. And these names, woo! <laughs> Shana, Shana Dakhet. I'm going to put these all in the description. Amana Reynas, Amani Shakto, Amanator, ain't that something? Amana Titir, Amana. Hachan, Mala Korobar, Lahi Deamani. And so it says from, they have all the dates here, 170 BCE, 40 to 10 BCE, 10 BCE to 1 CE, 1 CE to 25 CE, 25 to 41, 62 to 85, all of them, the rest are CE. 266-283 CE, 306 to 314. So what he told me next is when that spirit blows, it brings the winter. When the Holy Spirit breathes, the summer comes. And so remember what I told you summer meant. You got to go back to one of the other posts. That summer had a lot of deep meaning. And I was like, wow. But we're going to read the scriptures. Now learn a parable from the fig tree. And we, we already learned what the fig tree meant. It need eight hours of direct sunlight. It takes three to six years to put forth its first bud. Like, this tree needs some tender, loving care. <laughs> it says, when her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So ye, in like manner... When you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things are done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It says, when they now shoot forth, that's Mark 13, look, 28 to 31. All God's numbers, 28, that 4, 7, 31 is God's number. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. You know, last year, um, I was listening to that song. You can feel it in the street on a day like this, that heat, it feel like summer. And that song is really deep. Look at that video. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> um... I can't think of his name, Donald Donald Glover, but that's not the his artist name. But anyway, listen to that song. Listen to that song and look at the video. Look at the video and what's happening in the video. And I know that he too was raised Jehovah's Witness. I don't know how he's living right now. 
But even in the other one, this is America. And he's running at the end. Look at those videos. Summer, he was telling us summer was near. And I mean, you know, think how many years back This Is America came out. And it says in Luke 21, verses 30 through 36, when they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Listen, this happened when Jesus came. But for us, spiritually and symbolically, it was to let us know the devil was going to shoot his shot. And we needed to be ready so we could have our armor up so it could just bounce off. We have the truth. We are the children of the light. We have one king and one ruler that we pledge allegiance to. And his name is Jesus Christ. He died for that. He paid the cost. I'm going to get to this. It says, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves. And remember, I told you 2012 was Generation Z. And when we crossed over into 2013, it was um, Generation Alpha. <laughs> 2013 was Generation Alpha. And when I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, which is happening right now. People are being visited by the Father, They're being visited by the Holy Spirit. They're Because it happened to me. Listen to what I was hearing, knocking me out of my sleep. Hear that? But it was an ancient knock, ancient. And I would get up three o'clock in the morning. It always happened at three o'clock in the morning. Everybody sleep, dark. So I just happened to ask somebody who was in the spirit. And they said, the father wants to give you something. You need to um, posture yourself. And the next time, the third time it happened, I said, speak, Lord. And he started speaking. And, and I, it was a time, it might have almost been six months that I just did not sleep. I was constantly up. The word was just flowing like a river. And I was excited. It, it was hard to even go to sleep. I didn't want to go to sleep. It was so exciting. And that's the time that I'm living in right now. It's so exciting to see these words and even these things that he told me before I read these words, before I had any understanding of these words. It's some, he is the word. So it says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Remember I said prayer is a piece of the armor. And pray always. It say pray without ceasing actually. You could talk to the Lord all day long. You can talk and you can just lay there in silence and listen. But you should be in constant communication with the Father because it's the only way you're going to make it. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, it's not about making it into heaven. That was, you know, this lie that they told us. You know, you got to be good enough to make it into heaven. Nobody's good enough. <laughs> Nobody is good enough. But heaven is not for people who are good. Heaven is for forgiving people. Another thing I learned from Charles Stanley. I just liked his voice. I like he didn't yell and scream and shout. Because my dad had that type of voice. You know, he was strong. But he almost kind of talked with a whisper. 
but you know, and he was so nice. My dad was so sweet. I know men don't like to be thought of as sweet, but you know, you can be strong and still be loving. You know, that's the one thing. What did God ask for the man to do through the apostle Paul? He said, love your wife as Christ loved the church because he loved me. He loved us. <laughs> Read Song of Solomon. He loved us, okay? And that's how you're supposed to treat your wife because in treating her that way, it is if you're serving him. Serving your wife, you serve in Christ. It's love. It's care. It's honesty. It's trust. She can depend on you. But she still got to keep the Lord first. And y'all should be praying together anyway. That's the thing about the three is the magic number. That's why I played that earlier. It's like a triangle. That's why he showed me the triangle. Because he is at the top. And we stand side by side underneath him. That's what it is. The father is at the top. And then you have. Let's say the father, then you got the mother and the father standing side by side, and then they have you, right? You're you're still underneath them. And then you obeying them is the same as obeying him. That's why he said, honor your father and your mother, and the days of your life will be long. Because if you're listening to them and they're listening to him, it's the same as you listen to him. So from that, whole Ethiopian thing and the eunuch and the queen, he took me to this word, Malak, M-A-L-A-K, or Malik, which means king when it's spelled the Abimelech, like the king and Malik, or Malek means king. But it says for this word, it means angel, word for angel, for angel. And then the plural is the Malachim. And I'm going to get to that because it's a scripture where he says he's going to send the Malachim. And I'm like, what's a Malachim? The Malachim are the angels. That's what it means. It means angels. And then it's associated with G's, which G's, listen to this is sometimes referred to in scholarly literature as classical Ethiopic. Remember, these are the Coptic. Philip's gospel, Philip, the gospel of Philip is considered Coptic writings. Okay, So this is where this comes from. Jeez, is sometimes referred to as scholarly literature as classical Ethiopic, ancient Ethiopian Semitic language. The language originates from what is now Eritrea and Northern Ethiopia. Gs is written with Ethiopic or the Gs Abagida, a script that was originally developed specifically for this language. So remember, God is the word. This is all tied into God. So it says in languages that use it, such as Amharic, which is A-M-H-A-R-I-C and Tigrinya, T-I-G-I-T-I-G-R-I-N-Y-A. The script is called Fidel. Isn't that interesting? Fidel, F-I-D-A-L, which means script or alphabet. Hmm. G's is read from left to right. And that's different than rabbinical writings because they read from right to left. So this is the scripture the Lord gave me. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. And it's like a scripture of, you know, hurt and betrayal by somebody that you thought loved you. And a lot of times 
we hold on to these things and you know you're really free when you let them go no matter you can't I, I had this this was another bad habit I had I had a really bad habit of though I didn't hold grudges I held kept a record of the wrongs and it's a difference in remembering them to bring them up to teach then when you hold them and they still hurt you to the point that you can't talk about them without crying, being hurt, hurt, being angry, you know. That's that's the difference. When you're really over it, most times it'll, it'll come back to you for only a teaching moment to tell somebody else, I went through that and I dealt with that, but let me tell you what happened with me. That's it. But I had a really bad habit of, I wanted something, I wanted them to feel the hurt that I felt. Now, I wouldn't do anything for them to do it, but just the fact that I was thinking that is still what was allowing me to have a door open because it's still, still a form of unforgiveness. You want something to happen. You're angry. You want to, you know, get the payback. But you know what? A long, and this is some a long, long time ago. I learned this in the 90s. I learned this in the 90s from a job. I'm going to tell you what happened. So I had this boss, and I won't describe him, but I do feel it was a racial situation. And he was like a VP, and he was over like all, all the sales rep, but I had to have a relationship with him because I worked on the forecast. And so I needed to know how much they were going to, you know, what their, um, what they uh, forecast the usage of whatever for a certain amount of time. So I had to have a relationship with all of these salesmen. And he didn't know how to do what I did. And I know he wished that he did because then he would have, they started calling me directly. And it was okay with the owner of the company that they do that because we were importing these goods. So it had to be right. The numbers had to be right. You know, he didn't want to take the loss. Long story short, this guy used to just, he would be so dis disrespectful to me and talk to me any kind of way and, and throw things on my desk and just, you know, until one day. And, and I mean, I took this for a few years and one day he did it and he walked away from my, my desk. And I said, I am so tired of this ish. So he backed up because he heard me and he said, well, what did you say? And I repeated it. And, and so, um, he walked away. So I gave the devil license, okay, <laughs> with my sin out of my mouth. And so the very next morning I came in, and um, it was like about 10 o'clock in the morning, and the controller already called me to the office. And I had a specialized job. No one had done my job before. <laughs> and it kept being more and more creative as it went on, you know, right? But he called me into the office, and um, he handed me my check, and he said today, your last day and I said why and he said here so he gave me it was a um I was written up for insubordination but this is the thing the one word he wrote in there I didn't say made, made all the difference in the sentence and what he put is she said I'm tired of your and that's not what I said it's a big difference I said I'm tired of this and I actually even talking to him i was talking to myself like you gonna sit here and take this go leave you know but then he lied because i gave devil a license from my mouth anyway let me tell you how god is so wonderful and the truth will stand um i said i didn't say this and the thing is the controller was told not to ever fire anyone while the president of the company was there, but he fired me at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? This is how God works. So I went down and I asked if I could speak to him. And it's funny because his name was David. And um, I asked him if I could speak with him. And he said, yeah, you know, and I went in and he said, well, I have to make an example of you because I can't, can't just be letting my um, staff talk to my VPs any kind of way. I said, well, he didn't tell the truth though. And he said, what do you mean? 
I said, he lied. I didn't say this. And I wasn't even talking to him. Next thing you know, <laughs> he pushed the button to get on the loudspeaker and call him to the office. And he said, here, y'all work this out. And we went into his office and I said, you, you know that I didn't say that. And he tore up the check and said, go back to work. Now, let me tell you, I didn't, I wasn't emotional. I didn't cry. I held it all. I went, sat at my desk for a minute. And I went to the bathroom and I just cried because I was like, it was humiliating. It was humiliating. And it was prior to that that I had learned, the Lord said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And I just went on, you know, back to work. But after that, I looked for it. That's when I went to go work for the government. After that, I started looking for another job. So I was like, I need to get out of here. But um, some years later, and the reason why they didn't like to deal with him, because he was an alcoholic. He was always drinking. And though he could travel and go wine and dine, the clientele, he will also always get drunk, and he was a heavy smoker, and they didn't like it. You know that he was embarrassing them, and he wasn't getting the work done. You know, but long story short, I, I did hear about it when he was fired. All of it. I, I wasn't looking for it. I had forgotten all about it. I didn't even pray for him. That's the most thing to do. On, on most of my jobs, I pray for all my enemies. I'll be praying, like literally, not even knowing that they were my enemies. I would be praying if they tell me, oh, my wife is sick, you know, with cancer. So I'd be praying for them. And I would always wonder, this is what the Lord showed me with that too. I would always wonder, because he always, I'm telling you, this is not bragging. He always answers my prayers. Because I know he's listening. I believe. And I would see miracles happen for people. People get healed. People's lives turn around. People change. You know, they're very grateful. You know, I'm so grateful the Lord is supposed to be that. Whatever, woo, woo, woo. Oh, she got healed. Like, came, they woke up from the surgery. They came out of the hospital, whatever. But whenever he didn't answer my prayers and the person died, I always would find out later. They were cursing me. And the scripture is really true. He will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you if you are his child. God keeps his covenants. And so when I learned who I was, I started telling people, don't speak against me. Don't curse me. Pray for me, though. You know. Pray for me. And that's when I also started living differently. You know, I was like trying to, like I said, I did everything that I could do. and It was all works. It wasn't until I gave my heart, my mind, my soul, my body body, my will, till I totally surrendered that I had this relationship. So it says the G script, and G's, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about G script has been adapted to write other languages, usually ones that are also Semitic. The most widespread use is for Amharic in Ethiopia, and again, that's the Tigrania in Eritrea and Ethiopia. It is also used for South Abibet, Mayin, Agu, and most other languages of Ethiopia. In Eritrea, it is used for Tigre, Tigre, T I G R E, and is often used for, for Belin, or Belin, a Kush Tik language. Kush is in the Bible. Some other languages in the Horn of Africa, such as Oromo, used to be written using G's, but have switched to Latin based alphabets. And here's the thing I grew up around Latin Americans, and I mean, um, Filipinos, like this was our group of friends, you know. I don't like saying African American, I always say, I don't know why they label me African American, and I don't know why they label me black because I'm neither of those things. I'm neither of those things and it's not that it's anything wrong with them but black nobody's black it's like a void of color it's dark it's darkness and african american i have more than just african in me i mean i, I was quite shocked 
the, the blood the stock where I come from. I was shocked. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, and behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. The light is darkened in the heavens thereof. So this is what I'm talking about. He will turn again. And he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all, all their sins into the depths of the sea. This is in Micah. This was about the return of Christ. What would happen? Chapter 7. We're still talking about the sevens. And verse Verse 19, and God blessed them, and God, God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, replenish and subdue. Now we got to do it with the word, the true word, the true gospel has to be preached, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1 to 8. He will turn judgment to wormwood. That's that bitterness. Remember, your conscience is the judge. If you are, um, I tell people, if, you, if, if you're still convicted by the word, thank God. It means you're not too far, far gone. It means there's still a chance for you to get it right, to, to get up and stay up. That's what happened for me. I got up and stayed up because of somebody else who was obedient in their walk and told the story about their mother that told them one day you're going to get up and stay up and I saw when they were up and staying up no more you know in the gutter and, and doing drugs and, and robbing people and I, I've seen it you will turn judgment into wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth seek him that make it the seven stars and Orion and turn it the shadow of death into the morning and make it the day dark with the night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. That's all about the Holy Spirit. The Lord is his name that strengtheneth the spoil against the strong so that the spoil shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuke it in the gate. Remember, I said the pearls are the, the gates. Remember, the pearls are the gates. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and you take from his burdens of wheat, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not, not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine of them. For, for I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. This is one of the things I noticed back in 2001. I had um, kind of come into the city that I work for in a scandal. And, and it's so many cities that have scandals. You can look back over that time. But this particular one, um, um, that's what it was. It was, you know, lots of money, I don't know why, in trash. <laughs> They was bribing those people to pick their contract, to pick them. You know, it, 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 it's just, but it's so many other things. It, it all became about money, less about the money, um, especially when that, um, what was that domain, eminent domain? Oh my, my gosh, eminent domain, what was that about? But when those things start um, coming to pass, those were the leaves coming out too. I mean, people are just, I mean, you know, a union is formed, unfortunately, a union had to be formed to fight for the rights of the employees. I mean, management should have been making sure that the employees were well taken care of, but they had to get a union. When you start having politicians say, I ain't going to do nothing for them. What? They ain't do nothing for me. They didn't get me elected. Shame on you. You were elected by the people. It don't matter which people elected you. You were elected for 
for a reason, not for purposes of your own. It's not about you and your feelings. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they, they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it, it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may, may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as you have spoken. Hate the evil. We can hate it. That's why I said um, political correctness ruined America. It ruined the church. I said, I hate evil. You can hate the evil that people do. You're not hating them. You're hating the actions of what they're doing. And you don't have to be around them. He said, be separate from them. If they're going to continue in those ways. And that's what was happening. It was spilling over. And now not only are they continuing their ways, but they want to force it on you. No, it's not normal. It's not okay. I don't want to see it. I don't want my kids to see it. It's my choice. I made a choice to live holy and righteous and in a community that lives the same. And yes, it can be on this earth that God created where Jesus said he was going to build his kingdom on this rock. This one. It says, hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of, of Joseph. And so I'm going to read this chapter 11 and then um, let me read this Revelation 13. And all, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It didn't say everybody. It said those whose names are not written will worship the devil. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's what's going on with them right now. The same system they support is kicking their butt. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here, here, is the patience and the faith of the saints. Not just the patience, the patience and the faith. That's why he said, watch, watch, watch and pray. Even pray for your enemies. Pray for them to wake up. I'll be like, Lord, I, when I learned my lesson, when he told me, let those who don't do what they gonna do, is when I went in that grocery store and that lady came ramming me up, pinning me in the corner, pointing her her finger in my face for me trying to help somebody. Lord said, I'm going to show you when I tell you something. The Spirit will tell you who to talk to. But when I say don't talk to them, that's what I mean. That was my lesson. The Holy Spirit said to me very clearly, do not talk to that lady. And she followed me because she was being no and instead of her coming and saying, well, can you share with me what you shared with him? She came up to me calling me all kind of liars and such. And I pray that that lady heard me later and warned her family. That's all I can pray. Because I told her, if I could, I'd get on the loudspeaker and tell everybody in this store. But it's not my place. Anyway, let me, um, I'm going to read chapter 11 and shut this one down. I'm going to come back for another part. And it, I wrote above this chapter. I'm reading from the sealed portion of the final testament of Jesus Christ, chapter 11. I wrote above this. Read Ephesians 5, all scriptures about the bride. The explanation of the presentation of the endowment is continued. The second token of the Aaronic priesthood and the law of the gospel is explained, as well as the tokens and the laws of the high year, or a Melchizedek priesthood. Explanation of the endowment is completed. So listen, listen to this. You shall continue the presentation of the endowment by symbolically introducing Adam and Eve into the celestial glory or the world as it will be known unto your children in mortality. So you're 
our life when this happens. Behold, this world will be very, very much like unto the worlds that exist in the celestial glory of the kingdom of our Father. And those who reside therein shall partake of the same experiences that bring them joy in this world, except it be that there shall be no pain or sorrow, nor will there be any sickness or death anymore. But in the celestial glory, there shall be a penalty of fixed, which shall be an eternal penalty, that those who reside in that glory will always remember. And those who receive this penalty are those who did not obey the law of the gospel immortality, thus symbolically revealing the token and receiving penalty that is affixed to it. And since the presentation of the endowment is presented in a world that represents this glory, I would that you should introduce this penalty along with its name and sign, as I have shown unto you, like unto the first token that is called the first token of the lower priesthood. And this token shall be called the second token of the lower priesthood. And this token shall be given unto the participants that are are receiving this endowment along with the law of my gospel, which I should give unto them in the written word of the holy scriptures, which I shall instruct your children to keep a record of for their instruction and their learning. That's why he said, write it down. For behold, there shall come a time when your children will rebel against the things that you shall teach unto them. Yea, even those things which you shall teach unto them in their purity, having received them from my home mouth. And this is the thing. Now I understand why my mother wrote me letters with all these scriptures and about Jesus and about to let go of the hurt because this is what she was doing. Because she already took me to church. She already lived it as an example. I had a Bible. so I had access to it. I went to church with her. When I left the house and moved out on my own at 19, I went, still was going to church. But we're supposed to write it down and keep talking about it. And that's what happened. They stopped talk talking about it. They stopped passing it on. They forgot about it. And they shall forget these things and live according to the lust of their flesh, which Satan will entice them to do. And as he promised in the beginning, to take the treasures and things of the earth and build up kingdoms of men that do not follow the laws of the gospel. So shall he therefore have great power over the hearts of the children of men. That's why it's a heart issue. That's why he keeps saying circumcise your heart. Because you will be given allegiance to men and to things of men instead of giving allegiance to his word and what he said. And instead of looking unto the God who gave them life, many of them will look unto the earth for their happiness. And with the things that are upon the earth shall they find their joy. And this according to the designs and plans of Satan, who would have them turn away from me and the gospel that I have given unto you for their sake. And ye shall teach these things to your posterity during the presentation of the Holy Endowment. You shall show how Satan uses his cunningness and the things of this world to turn the hearts of the children of men away from our Father. And there are those who the Father have given unto me to help me in his work. And these shall be those among you who are the prophets and the seers and the revelators of my words. They shall be my disciples and go forth among the people and teach them the things that I shall give unto them. And these prophets shall be men because of the burden of childbearing that shall come upon the daughters of Eve. And these men, not having this burden, can dedicate their mortal days in the service of preaching and calling the children of men to repentance. However, there shall be many more women than men who already know the gospel and live according to the things that they shall receive by the ministrations of the spirit world. And these ministrations I shall cause to be given unto these women because of their righteousness. They being more righteous than the sons of Adam. I didn't write this. And during the presentation, of this endowment, you shall call others to play the roles of my servants, the prophets. And these shall give unto those who are receiving this endowment the law of my gospel and command them that they shall covenant before God that they will obey the law of the gospel 
as it is given unto them through the holy scriptures that I shall cause to be written, as well as from the mouths of my servants, the holy prophets. So I'm going to skip down. That was verse um, 12. That last one that I read. So I'm going to skip over to verse 17 and go keep reading because I have some highlights and underlines here. And um, they're related to John's gospel. And I'm going to give you all those scriptures. The penalty that the inhabitants have of the celestial glory received is the knowledge and the everlasting feeling that they reside in the lowest kingdom of glory in the kingdom of God. Though they will have exceeding joy in this kingdom, they will have humble hearts and contrite spirits forever because of the glory that they have chosen. Thus is the symbolic representation of the penalty of the second token of the Lord priesthood. So that's what we are. That's what the kingdom of Kohenim is. It's the lower priesthood because his, his throne is in heaven. And I have called it the second token of the Lord priesthood because it is by the authority of this priesthood that my, my word is taught to the children of men. For I have suffered them, I have suffered them to have churches and administrations of my word among them. And through these administrations, I will command them to establish this lower priesthood and its authority to teach the people of these churches my gospel. And all those who enter the kingdom of God must abide by the law of the gospel as it was presented unto them in the beginning by the Father. For if they cannot abide, they cannot be eternal. For behold, the laws of this gospel will ensure that all, all of those that will live forever shall live together in peace and happiness. And for, for this end is the law of my gospel given. It's, it's nothing wrong with the word of God. It teaches you how to live. It shouldn't be left out. It being left out is the chaos and the hell that we see on, on earth today. For, for behold, this gospel teaches all, all the children of God the proper way to interact with one another. Yea, it gives unto them the standard that is necessary to live by in order to ensure this eternal peace and happiness. For if the law of the gospel did not exist, then there would be wars and contentions and all manner of chaos in the kingdoms of the father he, he is the ruler this is his, his earth we don't own nothing but there are not wars and contentions nor is there chaos in the kingdom of god therefore he that cannot abide by the law of the gospel will not be resurrected into an eternal body until he have proven himself ready and able to abide by these eternal laws forever and this is what is Meant by being saved in the kingdom of God. And also, this is what is meant by the saving power of my sacrifice for you. For behold, I shall teach you this gospel when I come down on the earth as a mortal, Jesus, and I shall sacrifice my own safety and my own life in presenting this gospel unto you. Now, this is what is meant by, by the atonement that I shall accomplish for you. Yet, I shall sacrifice my life in order to teach you those things that shall make you one again with the father for the father and i are one that's john 10 30 through 33 john 17 21 read that and because as i shall teach these things which are the pure, pure and simple truths of salvation many shall be angered with me and claim that i am a deceiver who's trying to change the holy ordinances and traditions that i have suffered to be given unto them by their fathers and i told you it was on a, it was seven, July 18th, I'm not going to forget it, July 18th, 2018. Laying there, distraught, heartbroken. But I wasn't crying. I was just like disgusted. I was just like disgusted with myself. But I just laid there and I prayed. And I heard this wind. Now, mind you, windows weren't open. No TV was on, no radio. You know, I was in silence and I heard this wind like blowing by blowing by my ears and I remember I asked my son is it windy and he's like yeah it's really really windy and then the next thing you know I heard my father call my name just 
as clear and I said straight up. And I was so happy. I was shaking, but I was happy. And because I had longed to hear my father's voice. And I needed to hear from him. And let me tell you, I went on this when I was on, on Facebook. I went on Facebook. The Holy Spirit told me, open it up. And I was going to post the scripture. But what happened was the Holy Spirit led me to a prophet who was hearing from the Holy Spirit. And she had an urgent message that she had just put on there. And she said, it's time to put on your boots, your marching boots. If we are in a war, it is time to put on your boots. And it was from then on that there was no man going to get in my way. <laughs> Nobody, no offense, nothing from the past was going to stop me from being in heavy pursuit of God and in the ways of God and just knowing what he wanted me to do and what he had for me to do and what his plan for my life was. I no longer was concerned about what was going on with anybody else and trying to change anybody else and trying to make any Anybody else do anything? Because that was me. I want to make you believe. I want to, you got to be saved. You gotta, because I'm so terrified. Because I've experienced it. So I was so terrified. I don't know what them to experience. But I'm not the savior. Jesus is the savior. I can't save anybody. All I can do is give you the information. Tell you the truth. Show you the way to him. That's it. And because. I shall teach these things which are the pure and simple truth of salvation. Many shall be angered with me and claim that I'm a deceiver who's trying to change the holy ordinances and traditions that I have suffered to be given unto them by their fathers. And because the children of men are so easily led by other mortals who have received their power over the hearts of the children of men by their mysterious words and their supposed understanding of the mysteries of God, this power consecrated unto them by the voice of the people and because they are led this way they shall reject the simplicity and pureness of the gospel that i shall give unto them i'm gonna skip on over that was um verse 20 verse 17 and then verse 20 21 22 23 24 25 now i'm gonna skip on over to verse 29 but i will raise up prophets who shall be given the endowment in its purity. If you, you cannot receive something in purity unless you're pure. And they shall teach the people the truths that are hidden therein. If it so be the desire of the people to know the mysteries of, of godliness. That's the mystery. Godliness. Which mysteries are not mysterious unto those who know and understand them. But unto those who do not understand them, they are a mystery and will remain so unless the people repent and obey the law of the gospel. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 32. And those, those who shall be called by my hand to be the prophets and the revelators among my people shall know the proper way to present these things. And in each of their dispensations, because that's the thing that I learned from William Brown on the 7th the seven, I call him the 777. He said that. He said, there have been many prophets that have lived in each generation. He said, it's been a bride in each generation. And they were hidden. And he said, in each of their dispensations, they will rise up. But if the people, and this is why he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn, turn from their wicked ways. This is what he says. I will hear from heaven. And I told you heaven represents the waters. The firmament. He called the firmament heaven. The firmament it was water and water is being separated. He said I will hear from heaven and do what? I will will heal your land. The land can't be healed unless he hears from heaven. 
and haven't got to hear from the people. He said, and that's prayers. And those who shall be called by my hand to be the prophets and the revelators among my people shall know the proper way to present these things. And in each of their dispensations, they shall confirm this holy endowment to the needs and the cultures of the people to whom I have sent them. But the tokens with their accompanying names, signs, and penalties shall be everlasting. For these represent those that are unchangeable and everlasting. We sold out. We sold out. It's no going back. It's no turning back. It's full speed ahead. I want what you want from me, Lord Jesus. And it's all about him. And it, and it has nothing to do with it. land. It don't have nothing to do with money. It doesn't have anything to do with houses. No. This piece right here, nothing and nobody can give it to you but God. The security. The protection, the knowing, the wisdom, the understanding. No man, no man, but the prophets, the spirits of the prophets that came before. It's the Holy Spirit. Remember, I read the scripture where it says, and the same spirit, and the same spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And with the law of my gospel, that those who are received the endowment shall covenant to obey you shall reiterate it unto them the importance of avoiding those things that distract from the holy spirit and cause the children of men to lose the companionship of those who have been assigned to them as their spiritual guides there's you have travelers on the way you have people that are been placed in your life by assignment and they will go away from you. I've had sisters say, Sister, uh -huh, tell, look, leave him alone. I know how he came with you. I know all the things that he said, but he was lying. You always want to see the good in people. No, he's a liar. No. And, I, and you know, I just always just think they was telling the truth. And then what happened is when I found out that my Girlfriend was actually right. My sister was actually right. Then all the fury. <laughs> when they talk about a woman scored. But you know, thank God I'm saved. Because some of the stuff I did when I was younger, you wouldn't want to know when I was mad. Now I just be like, oh well, you get more. I can tell people gone. It's gone. So and I think that irritated people because they can't put no fear in my heart. You can't make me doubt. You can't, you can't take my belief to my faith. And in all these things, you should teach your posterity that they shall be taught the commandments of God by the mouth of his holy prophets. By the mouth. That's where the prophesy. And they shall prophesy. Prophesy means to speak. But how can you speak when you're silenced? How can you get the word out when, when, you know, the place that I decided to self-publish, I would have people tell me, you know, from the place that I chose to self-publish that they didn't get my book. They would order and not get it. Or even when I ordered some, the box is all tore up. I'm like, what is going on? Open up like somebody. He ripped it open and, and, and taped it back together. It's crazy. But here's the one thing that the Lord told me. The devil has no counter to truth. He can only run and hide. That's why the Bible says, who will be able to stand and face him? So this is what it says. And you should Shall also give unto the participants who are receiving this holy endowment the first token of the higher priesthood, which priesthood have the power and authority to have the privilege of receiving the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, to have the heavens opened unto them, and to commune with me, who is who is your arbitrator with the Father. So the scriptures he gave me for that is First Corinthians twelve, verse 
12 through 14, Mark 1, 10, Galatians 3, 20 through 29, 1 Timothy 2, 5, Matthew 13, 11, Luke 8, 10, Mark 4, 11, Romans 11, 25, Revelation 21, 2, Revelation 15, 5 through 8, no man able to enter. And these shall go throughout the days of their probation as honorable men who are blinded by the craftiness of men and who are deceived by the riches and the glory and the praise of the world. These are they who generally obeyed the law of the gospel, but did not accept me as their savior and take my yoke upon them and become one with me. And these are they which are the majority of the children of God. How sad. And because the main focus of this token is the ability of a man or a woman to look on to me and follow my, my example. And I didn't add, add that. It says this in there. Or a woman to look unto me and follow my example, as it will be shown unto them when I visit the earth in the flesh. Yea, because I am the center of a selfless life, which is a life like unto that which existed in the kingdom of glory of our Father. Therefore, the name of this token shall be the name of the Son. For behold, I shall live my life according to all the commandments that I have received of the Father and the works that I shall do and the desires that I shall have and the responsibilities that I shall be given shall be representative of my name, which shall be the Son of God. And those who are deserving of terrestrial glory cannot take upon them my name and bear the cross that I shall bear. Neither shall they desire to live for the sake of others. And in this way do these reveal the first token of the higher priesthood. And the token shall be given as a symbolic representation of the manner in which I shall be sacrificed because of the things that I shall teach to the children of men and which things many of them shall reject. And it shall be a sacrifice because I shall willingly give up my life knowing that I could save myself from the persecution and eventual death which I shall experience, which death shall be the most cruel and painful death that any of the children of men shall ever experience. And the token shall be given by the placing the tip of the forefinger in the palm and the thumb opposite on the back of the hand of the one who is receiving the token, thus signifying the final stage of the fulfillment of my name or of my works, as I have explained it unto you, which is also the name of the token. And we know that it was him. We know that it was Jesus. And I thought about something about the palm because I actually... This message is um, getting long, so I'm going to come back and um, continue. I'll just make it beautiful for Ashes Part 11. But isn't it the mountain that's called the palm that's like, like a flaming fire right now? And it's called the old summit, that place. You know, I just, just thought about that. And I thought about how. I and I'm going to talk about that in message 11, but how the palms came from the places that it came from before it got into to, um, Florida, you know, North Carolina, all these places. I'm going to talk about that. But anyway, I'll end this with uh, um, this scripture. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by my I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. And Beersheba, or all these things mean uh, oath of the wells. The wells hold water. Um, it's connected to Beersheba. And I'll talk about that in the next message. But that's Genesis 22, which is Revelation, and then 15 through 19. 
And that represents for me 2015 to 2019. I started having the end time dreams in 2015. My dreams came true. 2016, which was a preview of this time. 17 was the year of implementation. 18 was the year of transformation. 19 was being in pursuit, relentless pursuit of God. And that's what that's about. So I will start off. Beauty for Ashes, part 11, with um, reading 2nd Baruch. So I'll be back. I pray that message bless you and that you're looking forward to the next part. Let me see if anybody joins me today. Hey there, my brother, John. Oh, I'm sorry. I kept seeing it. They're trying to block out this message. Sorry about the audio. I'll come back. I'm going to check it out and see. Hopefully you were able to get what they were trying to take out. Okay, I'll come back and do part 11, and I'll see if I can fix the audio. Thanks for joining me, though, for what you did here. Sorry about the audio.